Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and this is part number two of rebuilding the tower room and more specific the attic and we're going to install the roof enforcement rafters today and hopefully also the insulation. Nowadays the construction of roofs is defined in a building index and that defines what kind of rafters you should use, what is the thickness, how many nails, how many screws, on how many distances you need to have supports and so on. All that is very well defined and it depends from country to country a bit but you can find it in your national building index if you want to know how that is supposed to be done on your specific roof if you have a new roof. But in the old days that was not the case and you can actually see that on these old beams people would just build it the way they thought they, they would build it. Uh, it's very strong because it has withstanded it already 300 years so it means it was built pretty well, but often it was oversized and in some cases it was undersized and those buildings have already since long time collapsed. So if I'm going to enforce the tower room, that is because that roof was rebuilt in 1920 after it was destroyed after the First World War. And there was not a lot of material available because everybody was building and things were expensive, there was not a lot of money. So they kind of rebuilt the roof with whatever they had and that's why you see kind of a mixture of parts in there, uh, wood parts that is, and there are parts of trees but then there are planks, there's a bit of everything in there. But still it's pretty strong and it's been sitting there already for a hundred years. So I am not going to complain about it but I'm still going to enforce it and I just like to talk to you a little bit about enforcement and I'm not want to give you any lessons on building and building regulations because I, I know for sure that there's many people that know much more about this. But there are a few things uh, that I want to explain to you before we actually start doing the work. The roof on the tower is what we call a pyramid. So it is four triangles leaning towards each other. And that is very strong because triangles by definition are very strong. So they're using rafters like this uh, to go up in the form of a triangle and they have a certain angle. So depending on the angle you may need more enforcement or less enforcement along that beam. So if you have a very steep angle like this one and this is really very steep, I would think this is almost 60 degrees, then of course most of the weight is going down along the beam downwards to the, to the foot where it rests on the wall. There is far less weight pushing or force pushing this way. But the smaller the angle is, the more force this beam will have going that direction. And then you might need to enforce that by some studs that can go on like this, going vertically down, so supporting that beam. And this is exactly what we're going to do uh, on the roof um, of the tower. Once we have placed that vertical uh, rafter, we'll also go into install the horizontal rafter again from the beam back to the vertical one and that is to keep things together and again we are forming a triangle. Remember that um, when the roof is on the wall although it is a triangle it is heavy and it's going to try to push these walls open. Of course this has already been anchored but by doing that kind of a construct you actually make it even more uh, strong and tight and secure. And this is what we're going to do. So now let's go back to the tower room and uh, start working and see how we're going to do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do now is to install a base plank and this plank is 14 by 3.5. Now the plank has to be correctly aligned with the roof so we need to decide where we want to have this base plank so that the upwards rafters actually are sitting on the roof rafters exactly where you want to have it. So it has to be a certain distance away from the outer wall and therefore I'm going to use a plumb bob to measure that out. Now the plank by itself will be bolted down with Torx screws. It is not that this plank will have a lot of upwards force but it will have a lot of downward force. Well maybe not a lot I hope but in essence the rafters that are going up are going to push down onto that plank but you still want to hold that properly into place. So let's start measuring out with the plumb bob. 
And that's what a plumb bob is. It's the good old method of finding out if something is really level or not. It's just a weight with a point and a string. I suspended the plumb bob from the rafter of the roof downwards to my base plank and I aligned my base plank so I know this is more or less right. And I'm doing this on both sides of the plank and also in the middle. And this is how I know that my base plank is actually properly positioned. So now I'm going to start bolting down that base plank. And to fix the base plank, I'm going to use Torx screws. And they come in different sizes, long ones, short ones, thick ones, really good stuff to use. And depending where my base plank is located, uh, if it's on top of an oak plank, I'm going to use the uh, smaller screws that I have in the middle. If the base plank is actually on a support beam of the actual ceiling, then I'm going to use a longer one. I would have preferred to have my base plank in one piece, but I couldn't do that because I could maneuver the full length into the tower uh, attic uh, be just because of all those oak beams that were in the way. So I will have to install it uh, in, in pieces and we're going to connect it with a metal plate. Um, that should just do it. That's not a major thing um, at all. So let's um, put that up. Let's put a couple of those in so we can hold these panels nicely together. So I'm just going to continue bolting down these planks and then do the other planks. So I've gone all around and this is the last corner to connect. And once that is done, we can start measuring the rafters uh, to support the roof. So I'm done with placing the base planks all around the tower attic. So now uh, I'm going to start measuring these uh, support rafters and cut them downstairs and then we bring them up and then we start installing them. Now to measure those, um, they will vary a bit from location to location because that roof is not 100% straight. And that's one of the things you have at old houses. Um, everything seems to be crooked and if you try to put something in straight, that doesn't look right. So, uh, yeah, let's start measuring. In order to measure all the supporting rafters and to cut them all in advance, I need to measure every single one of them. And I already made a mark on my first uh, roof rafter and I have one on the other side of the roof as well. And I'm going just to run a wire between the left and the right. And then I can actually see uh, how tall they have to be by just measuring them. And that is a method that works very well and, and it's easy to do. So let's put that string up and then see how straight the roof is. Now you could use a laser if you wanted to, but I think this method is so easy. And in fact, I'm quite surprised how straight actually the roof really is. Um, overall, this looks quite good. So now I can measure the distance between the base and the string and that gives me the length of my rafter that I have to install. So let me measure all these and then we're going to cut them. So it looks like um, we've got quite some difference between the maximum and the minimum, like six centimeters. But that's what you have at an old house. And um, the rest is about more or less the same, so let's go and start cutting. That's the issue I have here in this house is that I have no staircases yet. And I didn't want to make any because I will destroy them anyway with moving all the stuff up and down. So it's probably better just to work like this. And this is the other big uh, base plank that I'm going to chop into pieces uh, because I want to have counter blocks onto the uh, 
the vertical rafters. Let's pull that one up as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get a whole bunch of counter box and these are going to be bolted down onto the base plank and then against this side here we'll have then the supporting rafters going up. So now it's time to cut the vertical rafters and this is plank number six already but I have to cut it under an angle and I already checked it out before and this is about 40 degrees so here we go and this one is plank number six and it has a length of uh, 120 at the low side of course so 120 right and now it's a whole bunch of cutting six and now I do the next one which is plank number seven but since I already have it cut here uh, in an angle now I need to do a straight cut yeah and this is going to be plank number seven and one one nine And this is how we're going to continue. I have cut all the vertical rafters and they are about ready now to be connected to the roof rafters. And then on the base I will install these blocks. Uh, they go against that vertical rafter. Right. So let's put the nails in. And that should be good. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to connect one nail to begin with because I still want to have them uh, positioned horizontally. And with one nail, I can still move them around. So I'm going to put a counter block against the vertical rafter and since it's only connected with one nail on the top I can still move it around a bit and I'm going to move that until I have it actually level. Okay, and now I'm going to nail that in from the side. And then I can do the top. And in this episode, you'll see me with a bruise under my eye and without a bruise. And that's because I had an eye operation. But meanwhile, I'm re recovered and I'm ready to start again. And I started taping this and doing all this work before the operation. And then I had to wait about a week and a half or two weeks. And now I'm back to work. And here I have a whole bunch of planks that will need to go onto the attic. So now that's going to be the first thing. We're going to use uh, panels to insulate the ceiling. In fact, we're going to place them on the floor of the attic. So in that way, we isolate the ceiling of the tower room. And these panels are about 160 centimeters thick and they have an insulation factor of 7.25.
I'm going to open up the pack and then we can have a look what we're going to do with this. And these insulation panels are very handy because it's steel and groove, so the panels fit nicely together. But also they have a shield on either side. So I have an aluminum shield on this side and also one on the other side. And it's very easy to put all this together without losing too much heat. So I'm going to try just to show you that by putting it up here. I'm not going to push it in because that would not be good. But you can see how that actually fits together, right? So you need to push it a bit because it has to be a tight fit. Here we go. And I want to keep the heat inside the tower room. So if I was having a single side of panels, I would place the aluminum part facing downwards on the attic floor. In other words, the aluminum side is towards the ceiling uh, of the tower room. And this is what you would do, because that will reflect the heat, it will keep the heat. Now, if this was a panel for the roof and it was single-sided, then most likely you would like to have the aluminum side facing really the outside, so the roof. So in the summer when the sun is out and it's hot, it's going to reflect better that heat and it will keep the heat outside. Um, so you don't have to burn so much energy on your airco. On the other hand, uh, in the winter, it would be better to have the aluminum side at the inside so you can keep the heat inside the house. And that's why I'm using double-sided um, panels because they work in both directions. But okay, this is just my choice. It makes a small difference, but it makes a difference. Now, once you have installed all the panels, we're going to seal up the seams where the two panels meet each other with some aluminum tape. And there's a special tape for that purpose, and that will give us a perfect uh, seal. And as you can see, we already have placed quite a couple of those uh, studs or vertical rafters all around the roof. So I have done one side, I've done the back side as well, and the other side. I still have to do one side, and I'm going to show you that now. Uh, on how I'm bringing those into position. Not really special, you just use a rope on the top and then you just align things and then you just nail them. That's all there is to it. And here is the other side that I was referring to. And you might see that I already have installed also horizontal uh, pullers, I call them. Um, so I can hold the rafters of the roof against the vertical rafters. I still have to do a couple more, I'm still missing here and there. But that's just a matter of cutting wood and then just shooting them in. That's more or less right. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate because I'm just going to shoot in one nail on the top first, right? So, all right, that's one. So now I just need to align it and make sure it's straight. Now, I'm not going to put any drywall up here, but if you were to put drywall up, then you would want to make sure that these are absolutely straight. Okay, so now I can lock this in place. Okay, and we're gonna lock it in place on the bottom or nail it. You can also screw it if you want, but I like to nail it, it's a lot faster. Now this one is a little bit different because of this uh, tube that we have here, so I need to shoot it in the back. So this is not going to be level with this one, just because of the pipe that we have here. You might have been wondering what this tube is. This is actually a smoke channel for the fireplace downstairs, and it's a double skinned tube in stainless steel which is connected from the chimney on the other side, but there's no chimney through the roof. Uh, that was um, removed, I don't know when, it was like this when I got here, but there's still a chimney there, but it stops here at the attic. So I extended it under an angle, which is probably not optimum. It should probably have been a little bit more steeper, but it works fine. The fireplace just works like a champ, and then it gets into the chimney, which is going through the roof on that side. So that's what this is. And it's not very comfortable because I have to crawl over it or under it all the time. So um, that's what it is. So let me continue. Sorry. 
studs in place. I have all the vertical studs in place or vertical rafters, whatever you want to call those. And now it's time to um, install the horizontal um, rafters or pullers, as I call them. Now, I have pre-cut them on an angle of 45 degrees because that's the angle of the roof that I have. And they're a little bit too long, I know that. And the reason is that the roof is not everywhere the same. So I want to be able to um, have them all on the same level and all against the, actually the roof, the support roof right there. So uh, the way we're going to install this is by connecting it up like this and then um, nailing it down here just underneath the rope. So I have pulled a string or a rope from the left to the right at a certain height. So uh, this is where my markers are. So I marked it actually. But the first one I'm going to install actually here in the corner and I'm going to use my level to make sure that it's absolutely level and then uh, I'm going to shoot it into place and then afterwards we'll cut this off. I'm going to do this uh, on the left hand side and one on the other side and then I put a rope actually in the back. You could also do each one of them like this and then just check it level but it's easier to, if you move the rope to the back uh, it's faster right. So let's do the first one. Um, by the way, guys, this is an old milk can that I found here on the attic. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how old that is, but this must be pretty old. Uh, I might actually take it downstairs and shot blast it. it. It might be looking nice. Who knows? Um, anyhow, I got to work because otherwise um, I'm going to waste too much time with playing around. Put my safety goggles on and my gloves because um, shooting with a nailing gun, well, you better be safe than sorry, right? Okay, so let's see. Um, where are we going to place this guy? Uh, and this is only the first one you need to do like this, right? So, right, and I uh, have one nail here. You shouldn't drop your uh, level. That's not a good thing to do. All right. So now uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I put the rope to the back and then it's easier to install them. I'm having all these pullers now in place and you'll see that some of them are a bit too long. So now we'll have to cut that off. You could pre-cut all this in advance and measure everything. Um, if you have a very straight roof, um, you could do that and because it's always going to be more or less the same distance. But a, but a roof that is varying a bit, like this old roof, uh, the, the distance changes a bit. So you would have to measure every little piece separately and then cut it to the right length. So you're much better off to make them a little bit longer and then you have more play and then you cut them off. recording or not? All right. I'm done with all the supports for the roof. Uh, I did it all around. So now that looks a lot better. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to clean it all up so we can start working on the insulation. And I have still a little bit of brickwork to do on the sides, but that's not a lot. So uh, I'm not going to show you guys on how I'm going to clean all this up because I'm quite sure you're doing this all at home as well when your wife is asking you to clean up, right? So. This has taken a little bit of time actually to install all these uh, vertical rafters and these uh, horizontal pullers. Um, but at the end, I think the roof will benefit from it. Now, once we're done with all this, well, then we're going to continue downstairs 
uh, in the tower room actually uh, to clean up the floor and to build the door. So while I was cleaning up the attic, I found this old milk can. It's an iron one, which is a bit odd. And an old wrench. I mean, this is really something really, really old, I think. Um, if I had to guess, I would think um, late 1800, early 1900. Uh, that's the time they would use these kind of wrenches. Almost looks like it's been handmade. Um, the milk can, well, I think it's about early 1900, I think, but uh, it isn't worth much, but I'm still gonna keep it and I might shell blast it. And sometimes we all hope that we would find uh, treasures in old houses, but most of the time, I only find debris and garbage. Anyhow, um, now it's time to put the insulation through that little hole in the roof here, or the ceiling, uh, into the attic, and then we start placing it. So now comes the interesting part, getting these insulation panels through this little hole here. And I know it's a real tight fit, because when I put the ceiling up, I left this hole open just to make sure that I could do this. So let's see if we're going to be able to get this through. And like I said, this is a real tight fit. So it would be nice if there was somebody up there that could pick it up for me. But there is nobody there, so I will have to do it piece by piece. That's number one. Yeah, and I need, oh well, shit, it's about 50 panels I need to move up. Let me get on with this and then we start installing it.